Hi, I'm Rachel Barton Pine, and welcome to the final episode of Family Fridays with RBP. Merry Christmas! My family and I figured we had to do a Christmas show because, after all, our last name is Pine. So I'm delighted to be joined today by my husband Greg and my daughter Sylvia. Come on out, Sylvia! Well, we were thinking, which Christmas carol of all the Christmas carols has the words Christmas Day in it the most often? And it's definitely this one, I Saw Three Ships. This is an English carol from the 1400s, and it's a mariner's carol, which is why it talks about ships sailing into Bethlehem, which clearly is not how it happened or what could happen geographically, but it makes for a very tasty tune. I'm playing the Rebec because, of course, in the 1400s, the violin had not yet been invented. And in fact, you'll probably recognize the Rebec by, from lots of Christmas cards of angels playing the Rebec. Well, that's also um, a little anachronistic because the Rebec had not been invented 2020 years ago, but um, it has been around for a thousand years and it is an angelic instrument, so why not? All right, so here is I Saw Three Ships. I saw three ships come sailing in on Christmas Day, on Christmas Day. I saw three ships come sailing in on Christmas Day in the morning. If you were in those ships of three on Christmas Day, on Christmas Day. If you were in those ships of three on Christmas Day in the morning. The Virgin Mary and Christ were there on Christmas Day, on Christmas Day. The Virgin Mary and Christ were there on Christmas Day in the morning. music to start us off with. We're going to jump right to the 20th century and Sylvia is going to do her number one most favorite Christmas carol, In the Bleak Midwinter, composed by Gustav Holst, yes, the guy that wrote The Planets, in the year 1906.
Thank you, Sylvia. Well, if you could take my Rebec and bring me my Renaissance violin, then I'm going to play the next tune. One of the melodies associated with Christmas carols is what we call green sleeves, and that was indeed its first name back in the 1500s when the song was first written. And it had an entirely different set of words, what you would call body lyrics. In fact, when I was a teenager, there was a classical album by an early music group that came out that had a bunch of these Renaissance era body songs. And that was in the days when there used to be parental advisory stickers on CDs in the record store. And this album was the only classical music album that had a parental advisory sticker on it. Basically, green sleeves refers to a lady who likes to roll around in the grass and therefore her sleeves become green. I won't say any more. But of course, since then, it's attached an entirely different set of lyrics. And why not? If a drinking song can become a national anthem, why shouldn't a body song become a holy Christmas lullaby? So for today's version of Green Sleeves and Divisions, published by John, John Playford in around 1695, we're gonna just call it Variations on What Child Is This? Variations on green sleeves. 
more commonly known in this time of year as What Child Is This? Um, published in The Division Violin by John Playford around 1695. And now we're going to move up to the 1700s and do some of our all-time favorite, um, favorite Christmas music, which of course comes from the Baroque period. So on to the next instrument. Please welcome back Sylvia. So we've both got our Baroque violins ready to go. And we're gonna start with the violin duet movement from Handel's Messiah. After the prophecy movements, then the 12th movement is the so-called pifa, um, referring to the pifaro, the pipe, um, you know, woodwind kind of instruments that were thought to have been played by shepherds traditionally, but here represented on the violins. And that, of course, kicks right into the nativity story. So when you hear this kind of 12-8 sort of music, the da, 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 with violin duets, very often in the Baroque, that was meant to conjure up the image of shepherds. So you don't have to literally say there are shepherds here. All you have to do is play this kind of music and everybody knows what's going on. So here is the Pifa from Handel's Messiah. Sylvia's whole life to play these with her and she's finally advanced enough to do it. Um, the next one is my number one favorite. Of course, it's the Pastoral from Corelli's Christmas Concerto, which was published in the early 1700s, but probably um, composed more like the late 1600s. And Corelli is actually our ultimate musical ancestor. I studied with Davis King, who studied with Almita Vemos. And I also studied with Elmita Vemos, and she studied with Persinger. And Persinger studied with Isai. And Isai studied with Vuitton. And Vuitton studied with the Barrio. The Barrio studied with Viati. Viati su studied with Pugnani. Pugnani studied with Somis. And Somis studied with Corelli. <laughs> All right.
some of the most beautiful music ever written. Before we move on to our modern violins, we're going to play one last Baroque favorite for you. This is from one of the all-time most popular pieces of classical music of all these four seasons. Of course, we're going to do part of winter, but not the outer movements. Those are about being outdoors with blasts of icy wind and shattering teeth and snowstorms and we already get enough of that in Chicago as it is. So we're going to do the cozy middle movement, which is where they're inside by the fireplace, listening to the drops of rain on the window panes outside, played by the plucking pizzicato of the violin accompaniment. And actually, you can set your bow down, Sylvia, since it's all pizzicato. My husband, Greg, has generously agreed to join us to play the cello notes on the viola so that we have all the harmonies. Nothing like playing with your whole family. The last time Greg broke out a fiddle was a couple years ago when we roped him into doing Pachelbel Canon with us at church, because you can't do that with just two violins. And we'll have to think about what his next appearance is going to be. But thank you, Greg. And now it is indeed time to move on to the non-squeaky gut strings with our modern violins. So Sylvia, um, if you can go put your violin away. And actually, Sylvia is going to sing next. We're going to do a beautiful 20th century song by the composer Pietro Jan. Um, it incorporates a 6-8 version of O Come All Ye Faithful mixed in with his own original melody. It's one of my favorite um, vocal songs of Christmas and I'm so delighted to be playing it with Sylvia, even though it did mean I had to arrange the entire piano part for one violin. Well, I guess that sort of thing is good for me. All right, so welcome back, Sylvia. And um, we're going to sing.
Sylvia. All right, we'll go get your violin for our last couple of pieces. Here, take it. One of my favorite childhood memories around Christmas time was eating lunch and dinner while some of our vinyl records were playing in the background. Handel's Messiah, The Nutcracker, um, Carol albums, and of course, the famous opera by Giancarlo Minotti, Amal and the Night Visitors. This was the first opera ever written directly for television in 1951, and these days my daughter and I enjoy watching the original broadcast, which is on YouTube. But I know every moment of this piece, every word, every melody, um, from listening to the record so many times as a kid. And so I always wanted to play the dance sequence. This is where the shepherds are entertaining the wise men as they're following the star along the way. And so it starts out with two pipes, of course, two pipes, and then goes into some fiddling. So please welcome back, Sylvia. Um, this is very, very appealing music, but we definitely know it's contemporary because every measure has a different time signature, basically. So it was a lot of work to learn, but definitely worth it.
<laughs> Yay! <laughs> the Dances from a Mall in the Night Visitors by Giancarlo Minatti. Well, now the moment you've been waiting for. We're going to do a portion of A Christmas Carol by Charles Dickens. Well, of course, it's the scene with Fezziwig's Fiddler, an under-recognized, but I think most important character in the tale, because if you have a good book, you've got to have a violinist in it, right? And so this is from Stave 2, The Ghost of Christmas Past Part, when Scrooge, as a young man, is an apprentice to old Fezziwig, who's throwing a Christmas party. Of course, if you have a party, you have to have a fiddler. So we've chosen three English dance tunes to play during the narration. Two of them are by the first black composer in history to have his music published, Ignatius Sancho from the middle to late 1700s in England. And then where the third tune is actually the tune mentioned in the story itself. And this twin fiddle version of it comes from just last week. Our friend Tim McDonald made us this amazing version that I can't wait to premiere. So please welcome back Greg, who's going to read us this portion of A Christmas, Trick, uh, A Christmas Carol by Charles Dickens. Hilly ho! cried old Fezziwig, skipping down from the high desk with wonderful agility. Clear away, my lads, and let's have lots of room here. Hilly ho, Dick! Cheer up, Ebenezer! Clear away! There was nothing they wouldn't have cleared away, or couldn't have cleared away, with old Fezziwig looking on. It was done in a minute. Every movable was packed off, as if it was dismissed from public life forevermore. The floor was swept and watered, the lamps were trimmed, fuel was heaped upon the fire, and the warehouse was as snug and warm and dry and bright a ballroom as you would desire to see upon a winter's night. In came a fiddler with a music book and went up to the lofty desk and made an orchestra of it and tuned like 50 stomach aches. <laughs> In came Mrs. Fezziwig, one vast, substantial smile. In came the three Miss Fezziwigs, beaming and lovable. In came the six young followers whose hearts they broke. In came all the young men and women employed in the business. In came the housemaid with her cousin, the baker. In came the cook with her brother's particular friend, the milkman. In came the boy from over the way who was suspected of not having bored enough from his master trying to hide himself behind the girl from next door, but one who was proved to have had her ears pulled by her mistress. In they all came, one after another, some shyly, some boldly, some gracefully, some awkwardly, some pushing, some pulling. In they all came, anyhow and everyhow. Away they all went. Twenty couple at once hands half round and back again the other way, down the middle and up again, round and round in various stages of affectionate grouping, old top couple always turning up in the wrong place, new top couple starting off again as soon as they got there, all top couples at last and not a bottom one to help them out. When this result was brought about, old Fezziwig, clapping his hands to stop the dance, cried out, well done! and the fiddler plunged his hot face into a pot of porter, especially provided for that purpose. But scorning rest upon his reappearance, he instantly began again, though there were no dancers as yet, as if the other fiddler had been carried home exhausted on the shutter, and he were a brand new man resolved to beat him out of sight or perish. There were more dances, and there were forfeits, and more dances, and there was cake, and there was negus, and there was a great piece of cauliflower roast, and there was a great piece of mushroom loaf, and there were fruit pies, and plenty of beer. But the great effect of the evening came after the roast and loaf, when the fiddler, an artful dog mind, the sort of man who knew his business better than you or I could have told him, struck up Sir Roger de Coverley. Then, old Fezziwig stood out to dance with Mrs. Fezziwig, 
top couple too, with a good stiff piece of work cut out for them. Three or four or twenty pair of partners. People who were not to be trifled with. People who would dance and had no notion of walking. But if they had been twice as many, ah, uh, four times old Fezziwig would have been a match for them, and so would Mrs. Fezziwig. As to her, she was worthy to be his partner in every sense of the term. If that's not high praise, tell me higher, then I'll use it. A positive light appeared to issue from Fezziwig's calves. They shone in every part of the dance like moons. You couldn't have predicted at any given time what would have become of them next. And when old Fezziwig and Mrs. Fezziwig had gone through all the dance, advance and retire, both hands to your partner, bow and curtsy, corkscrew, thread the needle, and back again to your place. Fezziwig cut, cut so deftly that he appeared to wink with his legs, and came upon his feet again without a stagger. When the clock struck eleven, this domestic ball broke up. Mr. and Mrs. Fezziwig took their stations, one on either side of the door, and shaking hands with every person individually as he or she went out, wished him or her a Merry Christmas. And now it's time for us to once again wish you a Merry Christmas and a very Happy New Year. We're so glad that you could join us today, and we're going to sing the favorite New Year's song. Well, actually, Sylvia's going to sing, and I will play the violin. And maybe you can join in with us on the choruses. Should all acquaintance be forgot and never brought to mind? Should oh, I forgot to come in. I was so entranced by your singing. Oh. Okay. <laughs> Should all acquaintance be forgot and never brought to mind? Should all acquaintance be forgot and see you a lot in 2021. On New Year's Day, a week from today, I'm going to be doing a special afternoon concert at 3 p.m. Central where I'll be playing all three of Bach's unaccompanied sonatas. And then later in the month, I'm going to kick off a six-part bi-weekly masterclass series where I'll be coaching talented young artists on every movement of all of Bach's six sonatas and partitas. 
Meanwhile, every Sunday afternoon, starting on January 3rd, running 24 weeks, I'll be doing one concerto a week, 24 different concertos at 3 p.m. every Sunday. And you can check my website and social media and ourconcerts.live to see more information about all of those shows. I hope you have a very happy and healthy holidays and we'll see you next week next we'll see you next year <laughs> we, we wish you a merry christmas we wish you a merry christmas we wish you a merry christmas and a happy new year good tidings to you to you and your kin good tidings for christmas and a happy new year we wish you a merry christmas we wish you a merry christmas we wish you a merry christmas and a happy